Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as Kenny said, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that so many people did for this country, Lord God, as, as Tony mentioned. We thank you for all the blessings, Lord God. We thank you for the miracles, Heavenly Father. The ones we acknowledge and the ones that we just don't see just so clearly just yet. But above all, Lord God, we pray for the anointing of Christ that we might understand you, Lord God. Get to know you, Lord God. Get to understand and start to believe in me, Father. Start to have the faith of Abraham, Heavenly Father. That we might be able to stand in the lion den like Daniel and have the faith and the resolve, Lord God, to know that you got us covered, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the work that was done on the cross by Jesus. Thank we thank you for the preparation and the path that you provided for us in, in the future, Lord God. We thank you for this blessed day and the prayers that we can stay in the moment with you, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, it's a blessing to see everybody out here today. A pure blessing to see these people out here today. The Lord is moving this congregation now. The Lord's in control. Things are happening. And today, the sermon is on beliefs. Beliefs. Oh, yes, beliefs. How many things do we believe in? How many things do we not believe in? How many times do our beliefs change? One day we believe one thing. We can believe something for a few years. Then comes along a happening or an experience and then our beliefs change. And it's funny how a lot of times our emotions are so tied into our beliefs. These emotions that we carry with us. Happiness, sadness, discouragement, Joy, you name it, they're all connected to a belief. And when the belief is changed, when the perception is changed, sometimes the emotion changes with it. So, it's funny though, but I think a lot of times we have to sometimes question our beliefs and wonder and ask ourselves, what do I believe in? Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall come to see God. A pure heart means that you're not seeking things merely for yourself. It means that you put other people before you, other people's needs, other people's concerns. You're not focusing just on yourself. You're wondering what are the needs and concerns of the other person. And reaching out and doing things to help them with their struggles and their journeys. It's not just all about you. Because you trust in the Lord. You know that the Lord will provide a way for you. Your needs, your interests have been taken care of. And in the midst of that knowledge, in the midst of that faith, now you can step out and help other people right. and do God's work. So let's oftentimes look at our beliefs and check out our hearts and find out really where we are. Numbers 14, 11 through 12, Old Testament. Then the Lord said to Moses, what did he say? How long will these people reject me? <laughs> Talking about the Jews, the chosen people, the people God chose. Now he chose us too, the second coming. So we're a chosen people also. But the Lord asked Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? Key point, you can believe someone but you can still reject them. You see, you can believe a part of their message, but another part you don't believe. And that part, because of that non-belief, you reject. 
But the Lord hit it on the net. He said, not only do they not believe me, but they also reject me. In spite of all the signs which I have performed among them. Brother Bill, right on point today with his testimony, talking about all the miracles that the Lord performed in his life and how, how he has lived his life, he has come to see more miracles that the Lord provided for him that he wasn't even aware of. He was ignorant of. But the point is, we can believe in God. We can believe in Jesus being the Son of God. We can accept Him as our Lord and Savior. We can do all of that. We can come to fellowship, church every week. But we can still reject God. In spite of all the miracles that He performs in our life. We reject God all the time. We, me, me, all of us. Well, maybe not all of us, but I'm going to speak about me, okay? We reject God. You know, we reject God when we focus on our own needs and tell ourselves that, well, if I don't take care of this, who's going to do it for me? When we hold on to that scripture that I've never been seen before, God helps those who help themselves. Never seen that scripture, you see. When we stop believing in God and the promises that Brother Bob told us that he made for us, when we stop believing and then we start acting on our disbelief, we then reject the Lord in spite of all the miracles that he's done for us. God has a plan for each and every single one of us in this room. He's already equipped us to fulfill the plan. But at crucial points in the unfolding of the plan, we start becoming afraid. We wonder, based on our emotions and our beliefs and our past experiences, which help form our beliefs, whether or not we can complete the plan. The plan is not making sense right now. It must not be the right plan because I got a strong feeling here. And my feeling is telling me that I'm going in the wrong direction. And I can't do that. I need to reach out and find somebody else to help me. The Lord told Moses when he said he couldn't speak properly, don't worry about it, I'll give you the words. He finally had to give a man to help speak more. But the point is, we get so afraid that we won't be able to fulfill the plan. That we won't be able to stand in the lion's den. That we won't be able to have the things that we need. That we won't be able to get the things that we want. That we reject the Lord and His plan. And we act out on what we feel we need in that moment and we do what we need to do in order to have the things that we need in order to survive. We do it every day. And the Lord asks, how long will my people reject me? How long will they not believe in me? In spite of all the miracles. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Faith begins with belief. But faith is more than just belief. Okay? You can believe, but then, when you're in the fire, when you're in the trial, when you're going through the tribulation, when the fear of the experience in the past is upon you when you were afraid in the past and, and scared out of your wits in the past when the world was beating down upon you and telling you no you won't you see that's what erodes that belief but when you have faith there's no longer any doubt Amen. faith is more than just belief faith means no matter what your belief 
was rock strong. So rock strong that you just don't think it. You just don't speak it. You go out and live it. And show it every day and every moment. In spite of the looming danger in the future. In spite of the doubt created by your own disbelief in the power of the Lord. In spite of all these worldly things, like Tony just said, 12, 2 Romans, do not conform to the world, but be renewed by the transforming of one's mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have that, you start getting that faith, that faith that allows you to just do what the world says is crazy. How are you going to worry about everybody else and not take care of yourself? How are you going to do this and that and that and this? And you know you got limited resources. How are you going to do all these things that they would have you tell you you should be doing? When you know deep down inside you got to take care of number one in your family. How are you going to step out on that belief? Well, you don't step out on belief, you step out on faith. Amen. And faith comes with time. You see, I'm talking about the type of faith that Peter had. Peter believed in the beginning. But Jesus knew he only believed. That's why he said to him, you're going to deny me three times before this night is over. And Peter said, you're crazy, Lord, I'll never do it. But Peter only believed. And then when Jesus was crucified, and Peter and his disciples were afraid, they still had that belief, that seed. But that belief through the power of God was turned into a rock-solid faith, okay? Because after Jesus came back, when Jesus ascended into heaven, Peter no longer just believed. Peter had faith. He had the faith bigger than a mustard seed. You see what I'm saying? That's faith, and that's how life brings you faith. You don't wake up with faith. You learn and you live and you earn faith. And the Lord, if he has a plan for you, it's only going to happen through faith. Because it's not your will. It's his plan. His plan. And that's why you got to have faith to fulfill his plan. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because you can't fulfill his plan that he has for you. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, number one, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You start out believing, but you have to diligently seek him. And your belief tells you you will be rewarded. And you know what that reward is. The reward is the faith that you need to live out His plan. That's the reward, but it takes time. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 1. Everybody knows this one. Now faith is the substance. When you have a substance, that means you can hold on to it. You see, faith is different than belief. It's not just a word and a feeling. Belief is a feeling. But feelings change. Feelings are attached to emotions. If the emotion is bad, you know, the, feel, the belief can change. The world can make you change your beliefs sometimes. But now we know what the reward is for diligently seeking the Lord. It's the faith. And faith is a substance of things hoped for. The substance of things hoped for. It's there. It's real. No one can tell you it's not real. The evidence and the evidence of things unseen. Hallelujah. You see, Peter believed before Jesus was crucified. After the death and the resurrection and the ascension, Peter had faith. The faith upon which the church, as we know it, was built. God can't fulfill his plan. He can't build and use you unless you have that faith. And the call today is for everyone in this room, and you know who the Lord is speaking to, to stop just believing. 
continue to see, but let's start having some faith. It's a choice. It's a choice based on what you believe. But you got to go from belief to faith. And faith, oh Lord, faith. First Thessalonians chapter 2, 13, 14. When you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it as the word, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, hallelujah, thank you. That's believing. That's believing. And we believe that when we receive that word. But guess what? You might wonder, well, how do I get that faith? Well, guess what? Which also effectively works in you who believe. You start by believing. But that word of God which you believe in now starts working inside of you. This is why it takes time. This is why you can read a scripture one year and five years later read the same scripture and it takes on a whole different meaning. Because right. the word of the Lord is working inside of you Amen. and changing you in spite of you. So the message today is you've been chosen to fulfill the plan. But stop resisting the plan because of your fear and your questioning as to whether it makes sense to you. Because it's not going to make sense in terms of the world. It's going to be nonsense to the world. You've got to use that word. Romans chapter 6, verse 10, 11. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. We all know what that means. Okay? How many times when we fall to our knees after the loss, we realize our plan does not work? Even when we achieve according to the world's standards, we still don't feel right. We're still not satisfied. Or we don't have that Midas touch like we thought where everything turns to gold. And we realize we don't have that touch because everything doesn't turn to gold. We were just on a good run. The world lets you have a good run for a while. But that run's coming to an end. And when that run comes to an end, you finally realize your plan does not work. It is not foolproof. It is not fireproof. But guess what? We fall on our knees. We humble ourselves. We take on the spirit of Christ. We're revived. We're redeemed. We're restored. But sometimes when we get restored, we start backsliding just a little bit. You see, we get comfortable. We get comfortable again. The flame, you know, dies out a little bit. You know? <laughs> it happens to us all. The flame just dies out a little bit. We get comfortable. But it's okay. Because guess what? God is there waiting every second of the day for us to get back on fire for him. And by fire for him, I mean not just believe, but have faith. See, I switched that one in. Here it is. And the eunuch said, see, here is what? What hinders me from being baptized? This was the Old Testament when they thought the the spirit and the anointing was only for the Jew. Wasn't meant for the Gentile. That's what Jesus only spoke to two Gentiles in Scripture. Wasn't for Paul. Message wouldn't have gone to the, to the Gentiles. But the eunuch said, you know, see here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, Philip, remember Philip? He got faith now. You see, he was a Jew, but it wasn't his plan anymore. He realized 
This had nothing to do with his plan. Had nothing to do with what he thought made sense. See, he got faith now. He said, well, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Because he knew what it was about. Because he already believed and then lost his belief. Became afraid. The world scared him. The circumstances overwhelmed him. He understood it was a process of faith. But he also knew it was God's choosing who would be called. And in spite of you falling down and being weak, the Lord doesn't care. It's a process he's going to take you to. That word's going to get inside of you, and he's going to give you the faith that you need Amen. in order to fulfill his will. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mark 9, 23. Here it is, the last one. Here it is right here. And Jesus said to him, hallelujah, Jesus said to him, mm-hmm, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Yeah, right. You see, the start is the belief. The world and the experience and the word bring you faith. And when you reach that point of faith, where you don't rely on your past experiences, you don't listen to what the world told you, you don't worry about how you feel. Because if you have faith, the only thing you're going to feel is feel the power and the spirit of the Lord. And you're going to be in that moment and you're going to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. You're going to get that supreme blessedness. And you're not going to be doing things purely for yourself. You're going to start focusing on other people first. You second. You third. Other people first. You're going to take care of their needs. Right. You're going to build them up. That's right. You see? Because you've got the faith and the knowledge to know that. That's how you fulfill God's plan. Amen. And he's going to take care of every single thing else you need. Yeah. Every single thing. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. He maketh me to lie in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. That's right. That's right. For his name said, he lead me upon the path of righteousness. For his name said, and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil. For he's there to comfort me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. I am not alone. No son. He'll prepare a table for me before me. He'll prepare in front of all my enemies. He's going to anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, surely as I'm standing here today, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.